Welcome to this case, this investigation of the disappearance and the murder of Daniela Jones. Now I've covered this before in the past. I uh, can't remember exactly how many years ago it was. I think in two, three, but it could, it could be more. It could be more than that. So if you want to skip straight to the case and um, what I picked up as a medium, you can go down into the comments and there'll be the timestamps there. If you want to listen to me, my spiel and me talk about me as a medium and what I do and how I work and how I, you know, left it a bit, bit long to then get on and finish what I'd already started basically. So I had already filmed myself um, connecting with Daniela and connecting with, um, I believe it was a grandmother and connecting with um, Spirit. So I'd already done the main recording, but watching it back, there was so much, um, there was noise from next door. We've got kids all under five. So, you know, they're all jumping about, they're excited. So I had all that in the background. You will hear Ginger, Ginger's in the background, but that's fine. So if you hear some huffing, puffing, um, funny breathing, that's that's who it is, it's Ginger. So after that, listening back <laughs> when I was, you know, about to edit, I just thought this this is not really usable. It's not really to the standard that I wanted. Um, so I decided, I decided I was going to type all the notes up anyway. So I decided to type up all the notes and rather than doing it in, in the moment, which to be honest is a lot of me sitting there and tuning, tuning in and staring into space or with my eyes closed. So I thought, you know, you don't want to sit and watch all that. If you want, you want that and you want, you know, just put that in the comments and we can arrange that. But um, yeah, I thought because this means so much to me, this case and investigating this case, and it's been a long time coming, I wanted it to be as best as it could be. I want it to be natural as in me just being myself, but I didn't want all the disturbances and everything in the background. So yeah, so this is how we're going to do it. I'm just going to go through what I remember and go through the notes that I typed out from the actual reading that I did. The way I work is I see images. I see um, it could be like in a film type um, vision. I can hear things and see things. It's usually the visuals or the feelings so you can feel what the person is feeling or even for instance um you might feel like it's breezy but it's not actually breezy but you're getting that sensation like sounds i can hear sounds like part of tuning in was walking across a metal bridge and i could actually hear our feet as we was going across this this metal bridge so that's the way i work um i've well, I say I haven't been doing my spiritual work. I have, but it's it keeps finding me. So I've gone back and had normal jobs and other family life things that were going on, but it always seems to find me wherever I go. Um, it'll end up that I'll get talking to someone, usually a stranger, and they'll bring up the subject um, of lost loved ones, and then it ends up in a reading. Often the information I get can be even obscure to them. It's not always obvious what it's about. So I always say to them, you know, go and ask family, um, you know, look back at old photos, you know, dig a bit deeper into the history. And, you know, nine times out of 10, they come back to me and they're kind of amazed that, you know, the information that was given, they found pictures to evidence this or, family members are like, yeah, we knew so-and-so and this was great aunt or grandmother or, you know, so that's, that's fantastic. For me, it validates that I'm not crazy and it validates that the information that I'm being given 
is real. The most recent one was, it was actually going through, I've also done not only my own connecting in, you know, spiritually, but also EVPs and there's um, a dictionary app where they can speak through and the words, you know, come up in a list. And some of them absolutely made sense, not all of them. But at the end, there was a part, I see it as not just one is talking at the same time. I think when you open up channels like that using EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon. So it's almost like you're opening a big doorway and there's a big light. So that can attract all kinds of spirits, you know, from all kinds of levels um of evolvement so it's hard for the spiritual team to keep them all out i've noticed when we've really prepared and we've really made sure that we are you know only opening doors and allowing certain people in you know <laughs> there's less interruptions but when you don't do that you just get this influx of different ones speaking and they can be speaking to each other so it doesn't always make sense but I wanted to to use that tool as well because that helps if anything comes through through like it has done that helps with the investigating the cases and evidencing you know um what I picked up myself yes yeah, so it's really it's that extra validation really for me and and uh, hopefully used too so where did it all begin for me on my spiritual journey my mediumship well, like most people, from when I was tiny, I used to see um, weird things um, in a house we lived in. And I must have been, I was definitely under five. Um, and they say that you can't remember things in the way that I do remember things. But, you know, I remember where the furniture was, how it was placed, certain days when there was like parties and celebrations. And I used to see... Um, I don't remember seeing shadows, but blobs and misty things. I remember sensing lots of things too. And for me, as a small one, I didn't understand. We didn't go to church. We didn't, you know, I wasn't um, brought up religious. So I used to think it was the sand man because my mum used to say, oh, if you get sand in your eyes when you wake up in the morning, don't worry, that's just, that's just the sand man visiting. And I do remember one morning waking up, I used to always climb into my mum's bed. So I woke up in her bed. Um, I even remember which side of the bed I was on. It was on the right side of the bed. And I remember waking up and just watching for quite a while. She was asleep, my mum. I was watching for quite a while, this, this blobby thing just kind of there. And I remember <laughs> tapping her and saying to her, look, mum, look it's it's the sand man it's the sand man's come to visit and i remember her telling me oh just you know just go back to sleep just you know close your eyes i think she wanted five more minutes in bed but if i ever said anything to her she would just kind of ignore it or you know pretend it was um not happening because i think it scared her quite a bit another time with kind of seeing and knowing the future I'd always get those feelings of things that were going to happen or visuals and often they would happen or I'd know things about people um, that I'd just met that you, you, you shouldn't know. And one particular time, it was so vivid, we was going shopping. We didn't have a car at the time, so we was walking along. I was walking along with my mother, with my mum and... You know just casual just chill it's it's daytime and i just remember seeing it play out like a whole like film in front of me that the man who had walked kind of we crossed he was the other side of the road i see him getting run over so i tapped to my mum and said mum look behind you and as she turned around and I turned around, this car came veering off the road and knocked this man flying off the pavement. So that was the most 
vivid that I've ever had. Um, and that's happened just moments before. And I don't think we ever really spoke about it after that. Again, because my mum just would ignore those things. I think it fright frightened her and she was on her own, you know, single parents. So, you know, it, it must be quite spooky when you've got this child, you know, saying all this stuff to you. So I think eventually I just didn't really say anything about it. And there was no one else in my family that I knew sort of on my mum's side who um, was religious or who... So at that point, I realised, you know, as I got older, that it wasn't the Sandman. The Sandman. And I'd obviously at that point heard about ghosts and spirits, but I still didn't know how to navigate it and what to, what to do with it. And over the years, more and more things would happen. You know, there wasn't always the most positive experiences with spirit, um, which when you're sensitive to it or you are a medium um, or an empath, you draw them in, you know, you're like this bright, bright light. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't know how to deal with it. Well, anyway, cut to one day I went to babysit for my sister and she lived in these, this huge block of flats. She wasn't into anything, you know, spiritual or, um, although we did have a spiritual moment at the same time. Once we see this, um, I don't know what it was. It was behind the curtains in a, in, um, my mum's bedroom. And we just see this blob moving behind the curtains. It was almost like, um, well, yeah, it was just like a ball type thing. And you could, you, the curtain came out where it was moving. I think we just stood there, um, not knowing what it was and what to do. Um, I don't think we really spoke about that much after either, but, um, but she wasn't, although I think she'd had some experiences, she wasn't, um, I, I don't think she'd had as many experiences and, and she wasn't really what I'd call spiritual. Anyway, so I'd gone to babysit and in her newspaper rack down the side of the sofa, I found a book on Doris Stokes. And if none of you know who Doris Stokes is, she is a famous medium. There are people that called her a charlatan and, you know, um, a fake, but I mean, I don't know that. I don't know that, but um, there are fakes out there, obviously. Um, you get fakes in all walks of life and charlatan and those that prey on the vulnerable, they're everywhere. Um, so anyway, I read this book from front to back, I don't know, within two to three, three days. And it all made sense to me, you know, what was going on and why I was getting all these images and seeing things and it, it made sense. It all clicked into place. And I must have been about, I don't know, was I 15, 15 then, around that time. So anyway, the years went on and I eventually went along to a local spiritualist church. Uh, again, not all spiritualist churches are going to be fantastic and you're not always going to have the best experience. So I'd suggest, you know, try different ones. Um, until you find one that feels good and the energy feels good. But this particular one, it was only small. It was almost a bit of a, a shack from the outside. Well, no, that's a bit, bit um, exaggerating. It was like a hut. We call it a hut. Think of like a, um, a scout's hut or something, but it had a big cross. And um, as soon as you walked in, it just felt good. You know, the energy felt good. And for me, that was a sanctuary and a learning place. And, you know, there were some, you know, mediums that would get up to demonstrate and you'd think, what a load of crap without being rude. Um, and then others would get up and your mind would be blown. They also had spiritual healing, which I also ended up doing, spiritual healing. Yeah, so for me, that was that was helpful really really helpful so i suggest anyone who has say a child who they're seeing things like this happening to or feel that they could be open to it it's a good place to start is your 
local medium um, spiritualist church or centre. And if they can't help you, they'll always put you in touch with someone who can. Um, like we moved into a house, my children were, my daughter was a teenager and it was very much focused on her. Um, so it was a lot of negative stuff and it turned out it was to do with, with the land. Um, and I'd not quite experienced dark negative stuff in this way, you know, to this level before. And um, we'd had other mediums in, you know, um, even ones that were recommended to do clearings and just, just nothing, nothing was, was working. And I was desperate because my daughter was kind of being hounded, really. She was the main focus. I had experiences too, but yeah, she was the one I was most worried about. So anyway, the, the local spiritualist church put me in touch with a medium who specialised in clearings. And I kind of had my idea of what had happened on the land. So the houses weren't that old. It was definitely to do with the land. And I felt that someone had been. I might have to bleep that out unalived and the particular focal point where I felt it was coming from I felt that there was some kind of burial under there so when the medium came in very calm although they had got um, locked in their car when they was outside they couldn't get out uh, on the way, the sat-nav um, went wonky, um, not just sending you slight direction, it just it just malfunctioned because they had the old-fashioned, it wasn't on your phone then, it was like the old-fashioned sat-navs. So yeah, they really didn't want that medium to come in, but he came in very calmly. He had his um, assistant, she was also a medium. And anyway, afterwards when he was feeding back, he was saying, you know, I feel that it's this and it aligned with what I felt it was, you know, possibly the main focal kind of darkness that then perhaps attracted. But that land anyway, I think several homes in that area had um, really bad experiences and it, it was definitely to do with the land. Yeah, so that was when I started to learn to work more with, um, say, not such nice things, you know. Um, and ways of protecting and perhaps clearing houses. And it took a long time for me to get to a certain level. Um, and it's never gonna be perfect. And some things you can't clear and some things you can't um, get rid of. Unfortunately, I've learned, you know, if it is that say demonic or something and you have to choose, say your battles wisely. Some homes you can go into and you can, um, I cleared someone's home, they kept seeing a shadow person. And I felt it was very much connected to family and past. And they had a lot of old antiques and there was a particular trunk, you know, that was hundreds of years old that had been passed on through their family. So I managed to clear that. But there's other uh, properties, uh, family members' property that had layers and layers of dark history to do with the house, to do with the land. And it was just, I knew, I was told from the beginning, you're not going to be able to completely clear this. No one is going to be able to do that. You can cleanse, try to keep the vibrations of the house as high as possible, and protect yourself, family members as much as you can, but that's some you'll be able to pass on, but that's the best you're going to do, you know, they really needed to move, which they, which they did, which um, makes me happy. Yeah, so that was my, that has been a kind of short version of my spiritual journey. But I think the best thing for me has been when I've not been trying to actively be in that mode and then I bump into people and end up giving them a free reading. I've never charged them up until this point. Maybe I will in the future, I don't know. But yeah, for me that's been, and it's been really helpful for my growth and my learning too, because again, it validates and it helps me to see what's going on. For instance, there was um, someone's mum was showing me three rings and I was just paying attention to the fact that there was rings, but actually it turned out because there was more than one ring, there was 
more than one marriage. She was married three times. The thing, things like that you learn from, um, you know, pay attention to the, to the finer details that they're showing you. But you're always learning. You're always learning. You're always teaching and you're always learning. It never, ever ends. So I decided to use what I do as a medium and to combine that with the investigating the cases. So Daniela's case, yeah, I started it. It must be over two, three years ago. It must be more than that must be longer than that but I started to investigate it spiritually and I'd also covered it as a story um but yeah life happened things happened and also morally I wasn't sure if it was the right thing to do you know to stir up if you are getting this information um is it going to be distressing if I'm sharing this information you know to the family but yeah i think i've had long enough to sit with it and to think about it so on the 13th was it the 13th yep so on the 13th of september i picked it up again and started to investigate unfortunately the first lot of investigating that i did spiritually i can't find those notes anywhere the book because i write notes down as i'm going along i found the evps but not the notes so i've obviously lost those notes somehow in the moving around that i've done but that's okay because as i was doing tuning in again and starting up again i was getting reminded of things because i was being given the same or similar things so that then triggered those memories oh yeah i remember this from before or oh, i'm sure i got that before you know so that that's that's okay that i lost those notes so um and i think i've progressed since then anyway so it's probably better to just start afresh in a way so anyway i don't know why i keep doing this i've done this a lot throughout this video I don't know why maybe there's someone with me who did this a lot <laughs> because i don't normally do i don't think i do this all the time but anyway so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna get i'm gonna get started and we're gonna get into this reading obviously i'm reading from the notes i put down it's not gonna be live as in when i was tuning in as i said that video just went whoop, up um and I don't really want to use that NAF interrupted video. So when I before I was even tuning in, this was the 13th of September, this um, tuning in again and connecting again. And before I was even, you know, probably I have a process of what I do and what I visualise. Um, I see Daniela and she was showing me these beautiful yellow flowers and they looked like lilies to me. Um, call me a bit thick, that's fine. But I didn't realise that you could get yellow lilies. Um, I've probably seen them, but whatever. I didn't realise, you know, factually that you could. So I googled it afterwards, always Google afterwards. And yeah, yellow lilies, beautiful. That's what they looked like to me anyway. What she was holding and what she was showing me and what she was giving me. The way I work as well is psychometry. So I can be given objects or pictures. Um, it doesn't have to be the original. It can be a picture of the picture. And then that's the way I read and I tune, tune in. But I can do it without that. But that's kind of my preferred um, MO. Um, I can walk into buildings and then picking up things that way. I constantly try and close down unless I'm actually doing a reading because that's when you're picking up stuff all the time that's not even your own so I just wanted to put that in there as well as a side note and also I prefer to not know anything about the person that's why I like being given um, cases or pictures or meeting people that I know nothing about because for me again that validates what I'm picking up is true it's not something that I already pre-knew so it's difficult with this case because obviously this is a public case um everything's out there 
well not everything so I'm hoping that stuff that I got isn't out all out there you know but there may be bits that I say that everyone already knew because it's it's out there in the public domain but yeah I'm really hoping that the most of what I've got um, and even messages for her mother and her family. I'm hoping that it will bring comfort if they ever get to watch this. It will bring some comfort um, in some in some way. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to put that in there as a side note. So, yeah, these beautiful, she was holding these beautiful, beautiful yellow flowers and often in readings um i'm given certain flowers and they can be quite significant sometimes it's just like oh here you know this is thank you at, usually at the end but she was showing me these at the beginning um so yeah and i googled them afterwards and they represent happiness joy and thankfulness so that's that's really beautiful but it could could be linked into a certain memory she loves yellow because I did get yellow quite a lot um or that was a particular special flower to someone or her so we'll we'll see if anyone knows her or knew her or the family um or her mum and dad get to watch this if you want to validate anything um then yeah then that will be great you know that will be really appreciated so when I open up I was put on a white cloak on myself and I go through several doors. They're kind of like um security system, if you like, spiritual security system. So I put on this cloak and as I was putting on this cloak, I'm just going to check. Yeah, I'm on the right bit. I, I'm thinking, oh, I need to look at my nose. But obviously I did the reading. So anyway, so as I'm putting on this cloak and I'm walking towards another door, I'm put into these silver boots and I will insert a picture somewhere um, of these silver boots and they looked and they were sparkly and they almost were like a 60s style boot and then I was seeing um, the Spice Girls um, so I don't know if she ever liked the Spice Girls um, and I was seeing pictures and posters of Spice Girls on the wall it could be that she thought I used to love Ginger Spice and I used to actually dress similar in big trainers and had the blonde streak and I thought I was ginger spice um so it could be significant to that but I was seeing yeah these these a spice girl posters on on the wall it's a bedroom wall and the bedroom is actually that we seen was yellow again yellow um so I don't know if she had a yellow bedroom or she's just saying this was my favorite color because things can be symbolic or they can be literal I don't always know which one they are if I'm just seeing like visuals of things um, or they could be both. So yeah, um, that was interesting and I loved these boots or maybe she had a, I did think as well, maybe she had a silver pair of boots or wanted these silver pair of boots. But anyway, I Googled after the reading because that's when I do my research to see if I can find anything that links up to what I'm getting. Um, and it was Baby Spice I found um, a video of in these silver, silver boots. And they both had the same kind of blonde hair. And I don't know, maybe that was her favourite Spice Girl. But we'll see if anyone comes back with anything. So, oh yeah, she did, you know, she had a pair of these boots and they can cut. Or it just might mean something to them and they can... So yeah, I don't want to clarify or validate that. But actually, yeah, she did have a silver pair of boots or she did love... The Spice Girl. So yeah, um, be interesting to see um, what that was really connected to. And as I went through um, and see the pink, the yellow room, and there was pink also, but that could have just been indicating this is a girl's room. This is my room, and the room I'm in is quite pink. Cause this used to be um, someone's teenager's room that I'm renting. Um, I love it. It's like having the room growing up you know that I never had so you know I love it so I was seeing yeah seeing the room like that so I was also seeing or being shown these multicolored balloons um so I felt that it was possibly someone's birthday coming up um 
on the horizon that could be Danny Ellis or it could be someone else that's someone else's and afterwards I googled and I cannot remember the exact dates that came up but I think that it was either her birthday or her and her mum's birthday were coming up and that will make sense at the end of the reading what the note she left us on she left a message for her mum so yeah hopefully you watch the end of the reading and, and you can see what that message was I also see a, um, a black mobile phone and it was on a desk and it was in um, a clear plastic bag. I then see Tracy. Sometimes they give me something to lead me into the word they're trying to show me, but I see Tracy and then Trace. So I see actual words spelled out. So that's what I see there. I was then shown her with yellow ribbons in her hair in bunches. Um, so I don't know, again yellow, so I don't know if um, there's a picture that her mum has or dad has um, that they loved and it's in a frame with her in bunches with yellow ribbons, um, but she was also showing me her dancing a lot throughout the reading, I got her dancing. So although I didn't get she was like a really loud extrovert person, you know, I felt that she was more quieter. I also got this sense that she had this other, you know, more bubbly kind of um, performing side that came out. So I see her dancing and then she was showing me at the end, she was putting on tap shoes. So I don't know if she ever did tap um, dancing or it's just her show, a way of showing me that she just loved dancing. I don't know, but I got that quite a, a lot throughout the reading or maybe, um, she enjoyed um i thought as well maybe she just enjoyed parties you know things like that and gatherings but um yeah she definitely liked to dance a lot um throughout the readings which was um yeah which was lovely actually and as i look through i do see she tends to put she'll go through the stuff that's more difficult because obviously it is difficult for her to revisit these memories um you know um so she'd put nicer bits in between, I noticed, as I was going through typing up all the notes. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, that was, that was lovely. She seemed quite sweet natured. I then see what looked like to me the Dartford Bridge. And I see her uncle. Although I don't even like to call him uncle because he's not and he wasn't, you know, um but for the purposes of this investigation and for what they're giving me so we know we're talking about i see the uncle standing on the bridge and for anyone who doesn't know this is the, the one who's in prison for her murder her disappearance and her murder um so he was standing on this what looked like the dartford bridge again it doesn't mean he literally was standing on the dartford bridge it could just because they're showing me so he was looking out towards the the direction. So the way he'd be looking would be towards, you know, Greys. These are the towns um, nearby where she went missing. Um, and then Tilbury and East Tilbury. So he's looking out across the water. And I also see him dropping something into the water. Um, I didn't necessarily feel it was a body. Um, it could have just been evidence or something he was trying to get rid of, but he was looking out almost across and later on throughout the reading um, and EVPs and stuff, I was being given a particular area. So he, on the bridge, which I was getting at the beginning, he was looking out across these areas. So it could have just been them showing me, look, this is the area. He's looking at this area. And I see, um, I was given the word evidence. And I was given the word uncle. So that just verifies the image that I'm seeing, these words that they give me. I see the word River Thames. I'm seeing a massive concrete pipe again um, and the word pipe. And I was given this, I remember seeing this way back when I began this investigation spiritually, I was given this. Um, and several times throughout this reading, I've been given these images and also words and EVPs to confirm confirm this. It's a huge pipe. This is not any little pipe. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll get on. I'll get on with the reading. 
I see someone or something, I'm presuming it was a someone, but yeah, it could be a something, tied up and also wrapped up in, um, looks, it could be like black tarpaulin, but I say black sacks, but it might have been more heavy duty, like tarpaulin. And it's been thrown down. I can't see at this point what it's been thrown into, but it's been thrown down at an angle. So it's, it's almost, you know, flying down something as if it was just flung. I see the words Thames and I see the words locate. I also was given the word Trevor name. That could be some place, could have been named after Trevor, some road, you never know. And friend, the word friend. Also the words helped uncle. I'm being shown um, the Thames again and they were showing me a spot because we actually used to live near there, this particular area. Um, overlooked the Thames, we used to live on the um, apartments there um, and sometimes we'd walk further up and there was this little bit you could kind of sit on and we used to watch the fairies go by and sort of give them a wave and then beep their beeper thing. So that point is not too far from the, uh, the dart as I remember. I'd have to look on the map again for specifics but it's not too far from the dart for crossing. I see East Tilbury, I'm being shown East Tilbury, and I see a small boat. And this small boat is kind of slowly sailing along and it's trying to get as close to the wall as possible. Um, and there's a huge sort of concrete wall, with, you know, massive. And this is part of the barrier of the Thames that was built. Um, so on the other side of that, there's a little paths that run along too. And then there's slanted pieces, slanted slopes of concrete. And again, that acts as kind of, I think, to, to break the waves and everything. Um, but I was being shown this particular slanted piece of concrete with like stones in it. Um, it could be the literal spot or it could just be them showing me what to look, look out for. I'd also see a power station. Now this particular power station I showed me, I think it was knocked down because before the houses and everything were built, it was just kind of um, a bit desolate really. Um, and I remember when they started building on it originally, which was, God, years ago when I was young, they started to build a road there and that was it. Because there wasn't even a road that went through there at that time. Um, it used to just be quite desolate and you could walk down there like the seafront. I remember my granddad used to take me down there in his wheelbarrow. Anyway, they're showing me this factory. So again, it could be, uh, as I've gone through the notes, I realise it could be an indication of what to look for in the spot. Um, not necessarily at the exact spot. But yeah, this um, this factory, I think, had been knocked down. This tower, like this huge tower. And I did get the word tower from the dictionary, um, spirit dictionary, um, and I think EVPs. So at this point in the reading, what I'm getting is that I feel that we need to look for somewhere between East Tilbury and the Dartford Bridge. Those are kind of the key areas of where things were happening. And also, um, I'm kind of going a bit back to front, but because I'm not reading in real time. This is me looking back at the reading. I can say and see that um, it was kind of like they were mapping out for me certain key areas where they'd gone to or been. Because I also remember seeing from the last reading, there was, I was being shown Badger's Dean. And I don't know if he ever lived down Badger's Dean or owned a property there, but they were showing me that area that's nearby. Um, to what I was, you know, seeing this time. And also there was a petrol station, which was near um, Morrison Shopping Centre. At some point I was being shown that as well. And that was the last reading. So I don't know if that's really significant, but I thought I'd just drop those in there as, um, you know, we're going along. I see, um, I see this quite a few times, this huge opening, it was massive, like a big concrete tunnel and someone was standing in the middle of it. It was a man 
again this could be literal it could be symbolic um and they're yeah they're standing there and um yeah these concrete slopes that we're seeing and up to the path there's like a path leading leading along I, I see that as well by the big wall and i was drawn to the left hand side of these slopes so yeah at the end i think when everything was pieced together it would probably give like the, the, the a, a better picture and if things are repeated as well that's often quite significant okay i see this more than once um but i see a red car and then I was given that impression and that feeling and that wanting to question who who owns this red car? Who's who's is, you know, the driver of the red car? I also see a body being transferred from one car to another car. I didn't see any vans. It was cars. So um, it will be interesting to see if the police who haven't have any information that they haven't released um, or that they know things that um, wouldn't stand up in court but maybe um, kind of evidence what I'm picking up um, or what they felt at the time but there was definitely um, two cars I also again I'm going ahead of myself but I also felt and I felt this last time that it wasn't just him involved with um, hiding her remains or hiding her um it felt like he'd involved a friend and this friend owed him big time he was keeping secrets for this friend so this friend kind of was probably like very similar to him but had no choice either because if he didn't help then things that he'd done would come to light and plus he owed him a big favor type thing so that's that's the feeling that i was getting but i was seeing two men so I think that's quite important to this investigation. Um, if the police weren't looking at two men, that might be something worth looking into friends of his or acquaintances. And I do get some other names as we go through, which might um, be relevant. I see someone initially riding a bike. I just see the bike and I just see it going really fast. And I get that feeling of like someone, you know, wanting to get away from something. And then I did see Dan Daniela on this bike. Whether she owned a bike or rode a bike, I don't know. It could be literal, it could be symbolic. But she was, I felt it was more literal, but she was, you know, wanting to get away. And someone was following her. And I feel this was him, the uncle. I see the word creep being given to me and then creeper. Not creepy at this point, creeper. I also felt um, at this point of the reading that um, this wasn't his first attempt. This wasn't his first try. So she may have been showing me this was another time when he's trying to get hold of her or get her on her own or, you know, this could have happened sooner. Um, you know that there'd been there'd been quite a few attempts but i think she was quite wise to it um and uh, and felt a bit unsafe you know was starting to feel unsafe um and uncomfortable well you would if someone's kind of creeping and chasing you and and just doing weird weird stuff you would but i guess at the same time if it's your uncle and i don't know how long he was around um, I thought it was from when she was small, small, but I don't really know. I haven't really. I need to look that up and find out exactly how long he was around. But I would imagine it was for quite a long time if he was married to her auntie. And he was married to, I think it was he was married to her auntie. I remember that, um, which was her dad's sister, I think. And then I see her, she'd managed to get away. She's showing me she managed to get away. I see the words gone home. I see the words find the key. And this key is prop cropped up in the reading, I believe, more than once. My memory's not the best, being a bit menopausal, perimenopausal, and all sorts. I, I do forget things, but I'm sure the key situation will crop up as I go through my notes. If it crops up, then we'll see. But I'm sure, yeah, it was mentioned more than once. It was, because <laughs> it's mentioned again, just, just after. Okay. 
and I drew an image of the key that I see in my notes and it's a really terrible drawing, um, my note drawing, because it's just on the spot and sometimes I'm not even looking at the page properly. But I'll just flip that up there, I'll take a picture of that and put that up there, what I drew. It doesn't mean the key looked like um, this key, because I think I drew um, quite an old fashioned key, it could just, it's just representing a key. And then I see the word lost key. I see the words monster, Paul, avoid, Angela and Peter. These could have been connected to him. They could have been connected to um, what was going on at the time around her on this situ um, situation with the bike. I don't, I really don't know. They could be friends of the family. Um, but yeah, the word avoid doesn't make you think oh yeah wonderful she really wants to see them or connecting to she was trying to avoid him I was then seeing her um sometimes I flitter as if I'm in the moment because I'm kind of reliving the images so I might say I see her and then I might say oh um in the reading you know I see her so it could be as if in the moment or past it will be a mishmash of that because I'm kind of reliving what I'm seeing as I'm reading the notes and kind of relaying it and remembering but I see her she I was being shown um at first a living room and it was this long rectangular living room um most of those houses in East Tilbury um where she was from and lived had long living rooms rectangular ones um mine didn't actually in the house that I was in but um, a lot of them, a lot of them did. But I'm being all I'm seeing in this living room is this cream leather chair in the left hand corner. So I felt that you would come in from, say, the right, right side and walk in and then the cream chair would be right down the end. I don't know if that was patio doors or um, what was at the end, because it was mainly focused on the cream leather chair. So she's obviously hiding hiding from someone and I don't know if this is just a follow-on from the bike day um yeah but it's Daniela and she's hiding behind this this cream leather chair and it's slightly tilted at an angle so it's almost um it's not like straight on looking at you as you come in in the corner it's most people position them in an angle don't they so it's like that but she's behind it there's like the gap you know that triangular gap behind the chair I did draw pictures in my notes, again, rough picture, but I'll, I will add those um, into the video so you can see. He liked, the uncle liked, or they're giving me, he liked um, long blonde hair. Um, and I was being given, um, he likes touching my hair, you know, keep touching her hair. And in my notes I've put, maybe he was creepy when he could be touching her hair, which makes sense that any opportunity that he had, he may have been um, trying to touch it if he was obsessed with hair. Um, and the next bit that kind of was a light bulb moment for me um, connects into hair and his obsession with blonde, you know, long blonde hair or young girls with long blonde hair. I had remembered in this, you know, in the moment reading, um, that he'd also assaulted other young girls in the past and in the village we lived my son um and my daughter my mainly my daughter my son knew her as well she used to help pick up my son sometimes when i wasn't very well and take him to school um but also my daughter was friends with her daughter um and I was kind of remembering this and he'd been um, arrested for assaulting the mum and her friend when her mum and friend were schoolgirls. Um, he'd kind of kidnapped them then. I don't think he'd let them out of the, the room, something like that went on. I don't know the full story and I have tried to ask her if she would speak to me about it, but she, she doesn't want to, she said she doesn't want to relive it. She doesn't want to reopen that wound, if you like. Um, so it's obviously quite a difficult time for her. And I, I believe it was in the national papers too. But her and her friend both had the long blonde hair. 
So when that, in the moment, when it snapped and it clicked, it was like, oh God, yeah, I remember that. So it was obviously verifying, you know, for me that what I was getting was right because I remembered that that's, they had blonde, long hair too. I was then being told um, that there is a cutting of her hair and where is it? And this comes up throughout the reading. Um, so I felt that he most definitely took her hair, a cutting of her hair as like a keepsake, if you like, a weird keepsake and a for him to hold and reminisce and stuff like that. And then later on it came out when I was showing images of him with the hair. So, so we'll, um, yeah, we'll get to that point. And then I was being shown um, a bike laying outside on the floor as if it had just been like chucked in a rush. And it scoots back to her hiding behind the chair and that's what I could see visually. It happens quite quickly, these images and how they kind of move around and, and change. I could see a man knocking at the front door, which I think was her front door. I don't know, it could have been someone else's house, but I felt that it was her house. It could have been on this occasion or it could relate to like many occasions. Um, and he was wearing um, a white workman's helmet. He was wearing like um, when there's a luminous colour um, workman vest things that they wear, a white t-shirt and jeans. So it could be that that happened or it could be that she's showing me symbolically like out of work or after work he would, you know, come and kind of stalk her. Or on this particular occasion he may have come out of work. Um, I believe he was a self-employed builder. So that would make sense if, you know, he could just scoot and do what he wanted when he wanted. Um, but that's what I was being shown. Yes, he's knocking at the front door. And I was wondering, you know, did she lock it from the inside? Um, and then just run and hide. I've also felt last time, which I was being reminded of um, when I was doing the reading, um, the reading from way, way back that I originally did, I was being reminded of, of the key. I also felt there was a key missing and I don't know if he had a key um, or stole a key or looked after the family home when they went on holiday or his wife did. I don't know. But there was, yeah, this definitely came up before about a key. So if he had had a key, it would make sense if she locked the front door from the, from the inside. Yeah, but I don't know. Because if he had a key, he'd just probably let himself in and, and walk in, wouldn't he? Or maybe they didn't know that he had the key still. There was, there's lots about the key. I'm then showing the word Josie. And then I see a black and white cat I'm being shown. I see the words smudge, nan and house. And I can see, then see Daniela, she's running to someone's house. I see this um, garden and the garden wall. And I kind of see it from a bird's eye view as well. Um, and the gate where it was positioned at the back. And I did put a little drawer in my notes and I'll insert that there again. I'm not artist of the year, but I put that in there there. And I don't know if this was a nan's house because of the words I got, but I felt like she was running to someone, someone else's house. And I see the name John. I see someone cleaning windows, which is quite random. There was just a man cleaning windows. So maybe he was around at the time when this was happening. I see the words saved by the bell. I see the words autumn and find me. So as I was coming towards the end of the session, and this was lovely and I was remembering this and I was asking, um, is there anything, you know, any messages that you want to leave for your mum or your family? And I see the words mum and happy birthday. And I see the colourful balloons again. They're kind of floating these colourful balloons. So it could be significant, you know, as in, oh, they had those balloons. Um, those are the balloons they bring out um, every year to celebrate. Or it's just be symbolic, you know, this is like birthday. And again, I think I mentioned this earlier, I googled afterwards to research to see if things line up. And I'm sure that it was October, either her birthday or mum's birthday or both. 
So I'll slip a little note in there because I will Google that again and put what dates um, the birthday. Birthdays are, or at least what Google tells me. Just as I was ending, I see the It Clown and I've been showed this before. You know the It Clown out of that film where they it kidnaps and eats children? And I think that was originally based on John Wayne Gacy. Sorry about the abrupt stop there video. For some reason, I could only save about an hour's worth of video. Um, so I had to split it in two. So you can go to my channel and you should be able to find part two of Daniela's reading.